Tan over on the right side. So a couple of interesting decks. I think even though one of them is uh, an archetype we've, we've seen a lot of, I think the way that it's built and teched is certainly different and something to be talking about. But we'll start off with Eric Smith's choice. Uh, for those of you with a very keen eye, maybe trying to grab a little hint as he shuffles up, but it's going to be a Zoroark box as such. So Zoroark and a bunch of fun options for it to uh, change into and, and really cause some problems that way. Yeah, Eric is a very accomplished player. Top four at the World Championships in 2018. Playing a very different deck in that Rayquaza GX deck. But uh, this deck is... Or top eight, rather. It was top eight at the World Championships. My memory serves me right. But playing the Zoroark deck, it's got a lot of options to work with. Essentially, mm -hmm. Zoroark allows you to switch out a stage one Pokemon with Zoroark from your discard pile. And there's a lot of different ones to think about. A lot of specific ones here in this matchup that we'll get into with, situa with situational usage. Uh, Jose Mar uh, Marzon here playing Lugia. We featured Jose on the stream before. I believe last time was at Milwaukee Regional Championships. Was playing a very interesting uh, box style deck with Melanie. Uh, keep seeing some of these same cards over and over again. But these players are here at the top table for the same reason. They're talented and they're here to show their stuff. As the prize cards come out, looking yeah. to see if any of those relevant Pokemon are there. Get a sneak peek at a few of them. Yep. There is the Flapple and the Slowbro. Slowbro is only good towards the end of the game with that Twilight Inspiration attack. Yeah. So not too bad to be at the bottom of the prizes. Yeah, I mean, as long as he draws it out, the prizes early or before, you know, he gets to the point where he can use Twilight Inspiration, that is going to be very, very important for him. There is the Flapple in there as well. Uh, so being able to cause some problems that way potentially uh, would be very nice. The prizes are pretty balanced, I think. A uh, number of energy in there for Jose Marzan, actually. A Speed Lightning, a Capture, and a V-Guard. Uh, not thinking the V-Guard is going to be of any relevance in this one. Uh, so that's fine to put in the prizes. But overall, you know, there's going to be some options in there. I'll be curious to see if uh, Jose reveals any of his techs in this one, as we are going to start off the game already. So opening gambits for both players. It's going to be the Minchino uh, for Eric. So showing what the draw engine is in this one, and that Raikou uh, for Jose. Yeah, Chinchino is a great draw engine with this deck. It allows you to not only draw two cards, but discard cards from your hand. Mm -hmm. And what better way to get those Pokemon in your discard pile than utilizing the make Do ability. It's going to be very key here to see how Eric can set up. And it's a great starter in this deck, too. It has Call for Family, so can search out two basic Pokemon as well. Jose's game plan is the same we've said all stream. Find those Archeops, get them in the discard pile, get Lugia down, and look for that summoning star on turn two. Yep, being able to get that through would be absolutely fantastic. And one of the best cards in the deck for finding the Archeops is, of course, Evolution Incense. So being able to grab one of those right out the deck, uh, grabbing one, okay, grabbing two, even better. There are, of course, other options you could grab, but it just makes so much sense to try and get those unless you need to set up a Lugia. Yeah, checking through the deck, and as somebody who loves Ultra Ball so much, I can see a gold <laughs> shiny one when I see it in the hand. Has the gold Ultra Ball, that beautiful art from Sun and Moon face. Do, do you not think that's a little bit extra? The Ultra Ball's already, like, you know, the one of the flashier ones. Do you not think they're the gold ones a little bit, a little bit too much? Listen, my favorite, okay, I feel like everything I say is like, oh, it's all Ultra Ball, it's all Ultra Ball. But listen, as, as the best ball that you can use in Pokemon, you gotta, you gotta give it some respect. You gotta play the gold rarity versions of it. Just you wait till they release Master Ball. It's gonna change, they change have. your world. It's an A-spec card. Yeah, it's uh, put it back in and make it a lot <laughs> better than again. it was. Yeah. And um, I don't, I, I don't think we're getting that one back. No, was, uh, we're, I don't. Of think all so the A specs, it just wasn't a thing. Anyway, moving on, we're gonna start seeing some of the depth of this deck. Uh, I think Eric's right there to ask for a read of the Galarian Mister Mime. Just checking in on that one to see exactly what it is going to cause a problem for him with. But it's just going to be the quick setup. Of course, the Archeops are in there exactly where they need to be. That was grabbed with the capture energy, by the way. And it's over to Eric uh, with a number of options in his hand. Yeah, it has the double turbo energy right away to utilize that call for family attack if that's the selection. And we see probably the most important card in this matchup coming into the discard pile right away. Appleton has the attack. Thick Mucus deals 70 damage for every special energy in the, oppo in, in the opponent's play. So that means that if there's four special energy cards in play, it works. So the w there's a weird interaction where if your opponent, let's say, has two capture energy and a double turbo energy, it only deals 210 damage because it specifies energy cards, not mm -hmm. total energy provided. So 
that's going to be a very good card in this matchup, especially with Lukia's taking four energy to be powered up, especially when you're flooding the board with energies. It's just a consistent way to get an attacker that's going to be taking these one-hit knockouts. Yep, and thinking of consistency, the big thing here is Eric is going to need some Zeruas down because you need those to evolve into the Zoroark. So getting one of those out nice and early with the Quick Ball is exactly what he needs to do. Probably wants to find a second one as well. I mean, you need to be able to kind of stream them together, and he's just going to keep on that going through the turn. That is the first time I think we've seen this card on stream, Worker. So <laughs> Worker is a new supporter card uh, from Silver Tempest that allows you to draw three cards and discard a stadium card in play. Wow. Uh, it's sort of like a, a little mini delinquent, but it draws you cards instead for those of, uh, those of you watching at home who uh, played back in the... Uh, late X and Y era. Yeah, the, the work of getting those cards into the hand is, is pretty much all that needs to be done in this instance. But the Double Turbo is on the Mincino, and the Corpor family is going to make sure that some extra cards hit the bench. There's a Manaphy to keep the bench safe while he sets it up and evolves those into uh, Zorua's, uh, Zorua's, sorry. And there's the follow-up, uh, you know, Z Zorua mm -hmm. and Mincino. So even if this Mincino gets knocked out, uh, there is going to be the access to make do in the following turn. Yeah, finding two Quick Balls on the first turn means we get to see four bench Pokemon in play. Mm -hmm. Two off the Quick Balls and two off of the Call for Family. Exactly what you want to see. Having to prioritize that Mana Fee is a little bit unfortunate. You really want to prioritize getting these Minchinos into Chinchinos as soon as possible, but better safe than sorry and better avoid that as there we go. We see uh, the Summoning Star right away having the Lugia V-Star already in hand. And it's exactly what you want to see. No supporter card even being played yet. Can just utilize Primal Turbo. There's a lot of fun surprises in this deck, utilizing a 1-1 one, one copy of Flying Pikachu V as well. Well, what I think is really, uh, you know, dangerous here for, for Eric is, you know, if he can get this Raikou powered up, which he's going to be able to, he has two Primal Turbos, there's the Double Aurora and the Speed Lightning as well, uh, that spread with Amazing Shot is going to be causing a lot of problems for these low health Pokemon. Yeah, uh, if yeah. he can get, he's got to get rid of the Mana Fee, though. That's the, that's, the, that's the concern. So the Mana Fee being forced is, uh, you know, really, really awkward there. Um, but, you know, if there's a world, let's say game two, where he doesn't get the Mana Fee out, that's going to be a big problem. Yeah. Eric understands now, and this is information that I think Jose really didn't want to give away right away, that Raikou is in the deck, because now Eric can play very confidently knowing that I need to establish Mana Fee early mm -hmm. instead of playing this guessing game of what is my opponent playing. But I, Eric has not had the surprise yet of seeing Flying Pikachu. It probably won't come down in this matchup. It's not very relevant. You're attacking with Stage 1 Pokemon the entire game, but... Yep. It is something to notice as we see our first Zoroark come out into play. We'll use that Phantom Transformation to turn into Appleton. Thick Mucus is dealing 210 damage. So it's enough to take a knockout on, or rather, 280 damage. They've got four special energy in play. And you see how, as the Lugia player, you have to be so careful with how many special energy you put into play because the damage can rack up if you're not careful about it. Yeah, this Apple turn is definitely being given uh, options to take those knockouts very, very easily with the Thick Mucus. We are going to see the Chinchino evolve uh, from the Minchino. Make Do is going to make sure that there's some good consistency uh, coming through on this one. So Serena draw, uh, discarding another Serena and drawing up to five uh, just to make sure uh, that everything is, is above board. Uh, and those are going to be more cards. There was an Ordinary Rod in there as well. Don't want to let that one slide. Uh, that Ordinary Rod did, of course, put back a Zerua and a Zoroark to capture energy into the Apple Ton. So now the Thick Mucus is available as an option to an attack. Uh, you know, you just need that single colorless energy. Very reasonable ability to be able to hit. And, of course, get another one of those Zeruas down. It's nice to see Zerua back. Uh, it's uh, nicer that it's not evolving into a trading monster. You have to do that with the Chinchino now. Yeah, they couldn't give us it all in one package anymore. I think they learned their lesson <laughs> from, <laughs> from giving us Zoroark GX as much as I miss Zoroark itself. As we see some more of the fun Stage 1 Pokemon coming, Raichu is a very strong card against Lugia. Allows you to deal 140 damage if your opponent has used their V-Star power. Which, which they Which is do. perfect <laughs> against Lugia when they are rushing to use their V-Star power on yep. turn 2 with that ambushing Spark attack. As, uh, as we said, Appleton taking the knockout. There's a big find there to find the capture energy that was the one piece missing. And also has the trade ability as well. So can build this hand up big to end the turn off. Looking for maybe one more Chinchino, but does have double Zoroark in hand for the next turn. As well as potentially some follow-up and another Serena. And we haven't talked about Brakeson yet, but Brakeson is another new card that we got here in the Silver Tempest format that hits for more damage for every Serena card in your discard mm -hmm. pile. 
doing up to, I believe, 240 damage. So it is a good attacker to play, and when you're constantly discarding cards with Serena, Anyways, you want to just discard these stage ones out of your hand, it works out perfectly. Yep, very easy knockout there with the thick mucus, those three special energies, making sure that that is more than enough to be able to attack with this Lugia V-Star. Entering the active, of course, if it wants to Tempest Dive, it is going to have to, uh, you know, really be careful about how he attaches the energy to make sure it doesn't get immediately knocked out. I mean, if you knock out the Appleton, that's going in the discard, and guess what? Phantom Transformation can just get it back. As long as he finds the energy, he's going to be able to swing really nicely there. Yeah, Jose is playing a lot of these different cards. You have to imagine where the cuts are coming from. Dunsparce mm -hmm. is one of those cuts, Oof. which is so tough in this matchup as we will see Bramble Turbo just grab the single energy. So Jose, maybe having the double turbo energy in hand can play around that, and that's exactly yep. it. So we'll play around the Thick Mucus. However, does not play around the Raichu. It's dealing 280 damage. There's the knockout. And oh boy, this is a big time opportunity for Eric to swing the prize trade in his favor can yep. he find a single energy card to be able to utilize this Raichu to attack? Well, he's certainly got, uh, you know, a little bit of digging to do. Uh, we'll be able to, of course, make do and see if he can pull some of those. There's a Serena. Discard some of those cards he doesn't want anymore. They're not needed, so may as well give you more options to look for the energy required. With that energy required, you're going to be able to see, uh, you know, your options are in the discard. You know what's there, but it's not going to be right there immediately. The level ball going in to grab another Pokemon, uh, another one of those little smaller Pokemon, uh, but those are important when Zerua is a factor in your desk, uh, deck. So being able to you know, go in, get something under 90 health, and then just pull it out uh, is, is really, really good. And of course, it's another card out of hand. Yeah, it can also grab Chinchino in this deck as mm -hmm. well, so it works out perfectly in that sense. And it's a card you don't have to discard more cards in your hand, so you have a little bit more flexibility when using it. And this is going to be a big make-do ability. Do we see the energy card? If Eric wants to, can dig further potentially with another Phantom Transformation into something like a Chinchino. But here we go. Two cards here. Do we see the energy? And there it is. The yep. second card there finds the twin energy. This Zoroark can utilize Phantom Transformation to turn into Raichu. And this is such a big turn of events. Ambush Spark, the first time we're seeing it here this tournament, dealing 280 damage. The little Raichu taking down the big Lugia. And this is just showing, I think, already the depth of this deck. We've got a knockout from Raichu. We've got a knockout from Appleton. What else is going to get a knockout in this game? Are we going to see the slow bro at some point? You know, uh, has been taken out the prizes, remember? So being able mm -hmm. to, you know, get there would be really, really big. Slowbro is a card that when it came out, people were like, this attack is way too good. The fact that you can just close the game out by taking two prizes is ridiculous. <laughs> and now this deck has gotten a few more relevant stage one Pokemon that have fit well into the meta. Slowbro's time to shine is today. Jose's got to do something to stop this. The problem again is that again, <laughs> there's so many easy ways to knock out something like the Archeops. Because Archeops is also weak to lightning, it can still be knocked out by Raichu with Ambush Spark. Oh, yeah. So it's going to kind of come down here, it seems, to can Eric miss a beat? But with having so much support every turn, Jose's board is very different. It's just Pokemon that can put energy into play, and all you got to do is find the attacker. That's the, that's the story with Lukia. With Eric, it's constantly digging through the deck, constantly thinning cards out, constantly drawing cards, and trying to hit the energy cards to fulfill the attacks. Well, the Primal Turbos are powering up the Archeops. Of course, losing two prizes for that Lukia V-Star is definitely painful and is going to cause some problems. Choice belts going down across the board. Not going to be relevant, but at least they're not in the hand anymore. Uh, definitely don't want to be shuffling those back in later. A V-Guard energy attached as well to this Archeops. Uh, not going to be relevant, but thinning out all of those cards making sure they're not going back just before this Marnie is played. Eric probably won't mind the Marnie, to be honest with you. He's already got the Zoroark set up. You know, if he knocks out this Raichu, you're then potentially, if you're Jose, you know, opting into this one-for-one -one prize trade. And if you do that, Eric's ahead. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're going to be able to lose the game. So uh, you want to disrupt his hand as much as possible. Make sure he doesn't find energies. That's going to be really, really big. Um, you know, because I think if he falls short on the energies, then you're in danger. But there's certainly options mm -hmm. in there. Um, looking at the hand, I mean, there's plenty of fan phantom transformations uh, available there. There's the energy right away, so an immediate knockout in return. There's the Bird Keeper uh, to see a few more cards, as well as get the Zoroark that's already evolved into the active, uh, so it doesn't even have to search it out. And that's going to go to Phantom Transformation into pretty much whatever he wants at this point to just keep that prize trade going. Zoroark is a deck that you have to know how to play against this deck. It's not as simple as being up against the prize trade because, again, Slowbro just swings that ahead. 
even if the prizes right now looked like Jose had two and Eric had three, Slowbro would still win the game because it mm -hmm. can take those last two prizes. So you could still be behind in the prize trade and win with Zoroark. You have to pretty much take the game and make it a landslide to beat this deck. Yep. Or hopefully they whiff for several turns because otherwise this deck can keep up with knockouts easily and then utilize Slowbro to finish. So it's again coming down to every turn. Does Eric find the energy? Luckily has multiple copies in the hand. So if there's no Mari that comes out, it pretty much is just going to come down to the fact of can Eric stream Zoroark's, which means... Do we see the recovery cards? Like Ordinary Raw, we haven't seen that come down yet. There are two in this deck. We saw one. Only way. He, oh, he, we have he, seen one He popped down, down the, the Z Z Zoroark and Azurua mm. in nice and early after the first Phantom Transformation. So he's essentially playing with like a 5-5 five, five line five when he line, does yeah. that, which is pretty nuts when you think about it. Like imagine if you could take any other card and put five of them in. You'd do it in a heartbeat, wouldn't you? And that's what Ordinary Rod kind of allows you to do, right? And when you're saying you've got to stream these Zoroarks, you need one every turn, basically. Because at the moment, they're just swinging at each other. They're taking knockouts. They're going back and forth and back and forth. You know, if you swing at each other like that, great. You know, you, as the Zoroark player, you just need to have enough. And, you know, I think five definitely would be adequate. <laughs> Absolutely. Raichu will be the attacker of choice into Archeops almost yeah. every time. It just deals enough damage. It's a one energy attacker, too, so you yeah. can save something like your double turbo energies and your twin energies for later on in the and game. A capture energy, too, means the next Zorua is coming. So all he needs yeah. to do is find Zoroarks. You know, maybe if he gets the Ordinary Rod, now he knows where he is. He could, of course, just decide to, you know, Ordinary Rod in just Zoroarks and play that way. That would be really good. The mm -hmm. breaks in getting a read there from Jose, making sure he knows exactly what's going on, and probably has to be a little bit worried about it, uh, considering how many Serenas have been played. Yeah, at this point, because of the weakness in this deck, Breakson is essentially doing the same thing as Raichu in terms of damage, so, and it requires one more energy, so Raichu will be the attacker of choice in almost every circumstance here, as long as there's a Pokemon that is weak to lightning, but uh, Eric is more than happy to just continue to take these prize cards, going down to just two prizes, and Jose has to pull something here has to make something happen. Otherwise, you can't continue to prize trade like this because even if Eric were to take a single prize until Jose goes to one, Twilight Inspiration, and that's the game. Yeah, as soon as it's going. There is going to be the Collapse Stadium in play. So, of course, that bench has got to have something disappearing from it. In this case, it's the Manaphy, and I imagine he's feeling pretty safe. Now he's dealt with that Raikou, doesn't have to worry about it. You know, he's not going to get caught uh, by the amazing shot. So, okay, man, if he can go, that's absolutely fine. If he can bump this collapse stadium somehow, then he'd be able to, of course, set it up. But his board's pretty much set right now. He needs two more knockouts. Uh, he's going to be taking them from single prizes. So he needs two more knockouts, and then he's just going to be able to use those two Zeruas that are already in play. Yep, there is the Charizard. This is one of the cards that does not have an easy way right off the bat to be knocked out. However, with the breaks and down this card pile, I believe there are three Serena. One of them still in the prize cards, so... That means that will be enough damage to take a knockout on to the Radiant Charizard. However, it's not an attacker that you can really use back-to-back -back because you are unable to use Combustion Blast the turn after, and this deck isn't really playing switching cards mm -hmm. to move in and out. So it is an efficient attacker, but it's not a great attacker to chain back and forth like it is in a deck like Lost Box, Ooh. so to say. But a smart choice here, too, going after the Zerua, wants to try to limit the options Eric has to deal with this and potentially set up a Slowbro or another Pokemon on the turn after this. Yep, he he can also just attack it with the Archaeops, which means if Jose is able to target down another Zerua again the following turn, yeah, Eric could be out of luck. Well, yeah, it could get really tough. If he goes Zerua, let's say, you know, the Archaeops is going to get knocked out here, promotes the Charizard. If he can target down that next Zerua, then he's forcing that Raichu to come back, and that Raichu isn't going to be able to get the easy knockout on the Charizard. So smart play from Jose, but he's going to need, a, you know, another couple pieces. And he's going to keep drawing with the make do. Uh, there's another two cards. There's that worker once again. So being able to uh, draw some cards, get rid of the Collapse Stadium uh, is going to be big here. But for, the, for now, you know, at least in this turn, in this instance, things are going A-OK -okay for Eric. Uh, you know, he's going to be able to get the knockout on Archeops. That, of course, you know, gets rid of Primal Turbo. So you're really stuck with just that Charizard. And that's the problem is even if the Charizard doesn't get knocked out the following turn, how are you how are you attacking with it again? How are you taking yeah. the last prize card? And that's and that's the issue. And, and, and looking at Jose's list, there is the one copy of Bird Keeper, and that's really the only option. But even with that, you still have to find the way to retreat back into it. And uh, unfortunately, as much as Glary Mr. Rhyme likes to, to skate around and uh, have his own jolly little way, does not have free retreat. He is uh, not that easy to move.
Yeah, and of course, you know, you need to power it up. And without the Primal Turbo uh, to accelerate those energies, you're certainly going to be struggling. Once again, Ambushing Spark doesn't need the boost. It's certainly an easy knockout there on the Lightning Weak Archaeops. Raging Charizard hits the active. Uh, there is that play. Uh, he's got to look through, make sure he's got all the pieces. I see the Luminion, so he could completely shut down uh, the, you know, the Zerua chain that Eric has been setting up. And that would be a really punishing late game. But like you say, what happens after the Charizard Combustion Blast? Does it just sit there and take a couple of attacks from the Raichu? Maybe. <laughs> Well, you've got to assume your opponent has the Zoroark in hand and has a access to that, so you still have to go after it this turn. So the Quick yep. Ball will find the Luminion if it's not already in hand. At minimum, can He's just the deck out. Um, so at this point, oh, there's the Pikachu, actually. So the Flying Pikachu is a Pokemon that has free retreat, so it does open the Bird Keeper play to not forcing you to have the energy to manually retreat something like uh, the Galarian Mr. Mime on the bench. Mm -hmm. And here we go. We're going to see the play. There's the Luminion using Luminous Sign. Have to imagine... Boss is the only option if there is still There's one in the deck, there it is. and there it is. Yeah, I recognize that full art anywhere as he's going to target down the Zerua and really limit the options here. That's certainly not going to be an easy one. Um, but, you know, the, the concern here, the Luminion, you know, does Eric have a way, uh, you know, to, to force that up? I don't think he does, so it is definitely a safer one. Um, you know, nice to see that, you know, that's kind of Jose understanding this deck, that it is safe to play down that Luminion. Yeah, and Eric is not playing anything like Boss's orders in this deck, mm -hmm. just using Serena as the form of gusting. So it's really going to come down to can Jose draw into this. Now, utilizing Luminion means that because there's only one in the deck, there's no other way to search things out. So Jose is sort of relying on the fact that I'm going to thin out my deck as much as possible. I'm going to grab all these Pokemon. I'm going to take these knockouts. And from there, I'm just going to hope that I can draw in my Bird Keeper or that for mm -hmm. some reason you are not able to knock out this Charizard in two turns. Don't think the second one is happening, but... No. It's no. going to come down to, uh, also, can Eric do anything to change this? There's no way to cheat a Zoroark into play in one turn. You've got to uh, evolve it like every other Pokemon. Yeah, this what game, can you do in this position? This game would have been absolutely over if Eric had taken that Serena off the prizes, but it's the last one is stuck. It's that last prize. Yeah, because Luminion came down to play Serena is that potential to take a knockout onto either the Flying Pikachu or the Luminion. Also, had Eric drawn into the Ordinary Rod the turn before, mm -hmm. could have put the Zerua's back, had plenty of ways in the hand to search it. But as you see, it's one of those last four cards left in deck. There's no worse feeling when you're digging through your deck, you're looking for a card, and it's it's on the bottom. It's like yep. the last card, and you've got like two cards left in deck. And that must be what Eric is feeling like. Why, <sighs> out of all the energies I have in my hand, why couldn't I just change one out for an Ordinary Rod? That would have been nice. Would have been very pleasant. Of course, Jose only has two cards in hand. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, kind of a big ask uh, for that Bird Keeper play to come through. Um, you know, Bird Keeper into the Flying Pikachu V and then bounce that back for the Combustion Blast and the win. But he has shown there is a very clear way uh, around this chain that Eric had set up of the Zerua, Zoroark, you know, transformation. Just go after it with the boss's orders. This is really tough for Eric. This is big. Th so essentially what Eric oh. thought to himself at this position from what we're understanding is that Jose went for this play holding the Bird Keeper in hand, right? Luminion searched for the boss because the yep. other supporter was in hand and then next turn it's as simple as playing it. But Jose didn't have it in hand for my knowledge. So this is going to be an additional four new cards to see where the Bird Keeper could potentially be here and Eric could potentially be gifting Jose the game yep. if he can find the Bird Keeper. He's not showing us though. He's leaving us in suspense. That is that is very cheeky of Jose, but I do respect it. Of course, with that draw off the money, Eric knows what he's going to be able to see. He is going to get a Zerua and a Zoroark back in with the Ordinary Rod that he took. He's keeping that hand so neatly covered. It's not uh, there, I don't think. I think ah, I see a few full art supporters. They all look so similar. I know, I know. It's a bit of a nightmare, really, isn't it, to, to try and deduce. But, um, you know, we're going to see, uh, obviously, uh, an ambushing spark into the Radiant Charizard. And basically, you just say to Jose, do you have it? It's a very honest game plan. Do you have it? The Marnie, mm. though, is a risk. I think the mind game that you mentioned, he must have had it in hand. Is absolutely audacious. He's going to keep drawing with the make do. Maybe trying to find that Zerua that he threw in a little bit earlier. And there's another make do. Double turbo energy. So uh, it's going to be a quick ball and evolution incense. Not quite what we're looking for. Yeah, at this uh, point, we're not really looking for anything else, yeah. right? Like it, it pretty much comes down to we're going to hit this Charizard and next turn, if our opponent can knock us out, sure. But if the Charizard doesn't move, then 
We deal yep. the last 20 damage. We need to take this knockout. Yeah, well, he's going to use the Quick Ball to get the Zerua. Uh, set that up just, just in case. You know, you mm -hmm. never know. Uh, but with one prize apiece, I don't think there's very much. And really, this match has been delivering for me. Uh, the fact that we've brought it down to one prize apiece. Uh, you know, even Jose giving up those two prizes early has managed to claw his way back with some really smart, smart gameplay. So here we go. This may be very well on Jose having the top deck. Ambushing spark. damage with ambushing spark. It's not enough. It falls short. It's 20 short, but it doesn't matter. It's all about what Jose can do this turn. He is. Ooh. Uh, you, you slam it, right? Like if you have it, you, you, you just slam it down right away, right? So I just want to make sure that. He Bird hasn't looked at the top card yet. <laughs> I, I think if he looked at it, I think he looked at it. There's, there's no way you, you draw it and then you just look at your opponent's discard pile. You don't just look at it, right? I mean, maybe he peeped it. Unless maybe I missed it, and maybe it was, it was already a glance. discarded, and he just went for the for just the option that Eric wouldn't attack in a Charizard. But uh, I mean, there's Ultra Ball, there's so Ultra Ball. See you later, we're gonna move. we're gonna see if Bird Keeper's in the deck right now. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna be informed. Yeah, we're gonna get a great look in this one. There's the Marnie. That's the one of those pull-out spots we were talking about. Oh, it's uh, he's rummaging through at an absolute rate of knots. There's a flying Pikachu. I, I actually don't know if I see it. Oh, oh wait, there it is. There, there yep, it is. It is I there. see that. I see the cap. It is in the deck, yeah. He's, uh, but he's got a thin, right? If he, if he has any draw option in his hand, you know, he needs to thin. And he has to, I mean, to, to do it, he has to thin oh, without okay. uh, using a supporter. Yeah. So I, I think this one without it is absolutely done. He's going to try and stall with the boss's orders. Yeah, this is like uh, all you can do but, at this uh, position. But yeah, Eric's hand is full yeah. of goodies and should just be able to get that Chinchino out pretty quickly. Oh, they're having a word. The judges are uh, interacting with them, I believe. Uh, so just check in uh, exactly what's going on. Yep, just figuring out what's happening here with everything. And oh. let's, uh, let's see if we can get some confirmation on what's going on. While they, while they solve this at the table, Ethan, you know, Jose knows the bird keep is stuck in the deck. Do you think the boss's orders is a safe enough play, or is this him just kind of accepting? I think you got it. Well, you have to play your outs at this point. You've already invested right. this much time. And wh what are your options? You Marnie your opponent, but they can draw through their whole deck pretty much anyways with Chinchino. You can research, but I mean, I don't know how many double turbo are left. I've been keeping somewhat of a track. I know we've seen one double turbo go down, but your only your only line of play potentially is to like double turbo energy this Charizard and then retreat retreat into the flying Pikachu, mm -hmm. and from there. Once you retreat into Flying Pikachu, it doesn't get knocked out even with weakness to the Raichu. Yeah. And then from there, you play around your opponent having, well, what can they do to knock you out at that point, right? Like, yeah. what, uh, the only way to do it is they have to have the Zoroark, they have to have the way to, they have to have the Zoroark, and they have whatever. But uh, it looks like everything's been resolved here. Eric will win game one, a long game one at that, 25 minutes. So, yep. Uh, I mean, both players wouldn't hate the draw here. They want that win to get in. Six, one, and two is not a bad record, but. They just they want to just have that stress off their back of being like, okay, I'm in day two. I get to play this last round out, and if I win, I win. If I lose, I get to play tomorrow. That's the whole goal. So I think this brings up quite an interesting discussion. We've had it a couple of times today. I know the other guys have been talking about it, about scooping, right? And with Jose being behind in the prize trade, you know, there, there was obviously that fight back. There was obviously that stall, and yes, he was looking for that bird keeper, but he didn't get there, and he spent a lot of time on that as well. So do we think maybe an earlier, uh, you know, exit was the way, or do you think it was a, a you know, a real out? No, that was a real out. Uh, he just got unlucky there, and uh, even after getting Marnie too, right, had that opportunity and had that option. So I think he played to a very reasonable out. It, it was likely there, right? He had the full chance to win the game. Like yeah. the ball was in his court for not the entire game, but just like that split second there at the end. So these are things that you've got to you've got to consider when going into this. There, it's one of those things where you took the risk and it didn't pay off. Yeah, and it hurt. It, it really hurts to be in this position where uh, you have to essentially win this game and work super hard game two just to figure it out. And if you're Eric, you also have the opportunity to just be like, I don't want to tie. Like if I, if I have my opening hand and it's terrible and my opponent just like starts with Ultra Ball and discards double Archeops and like sets up and pops off, yeah. then you can just scoop and go to the second game or go to game three and be like, listen, when we played a game where we both drew well, my deck dominated. I was knocking out Lukia's in one hit. I have a good idea you're not playing Dunsparce in your deck either. Like that's a matchup I want to play. Yeah. I want to play that game out. Yeah, if, like, if you're it, not It's worth it for me to just scoop my cards up and go to game three to not tie. If you're not getting the good vibes coming into that turn one, turn two level, just bounce to the next one. I think that's really important. The prizes do come down for these trainers. It's a 
you know, Minchino and as a ruler in there could be annoying. One of those bosses' orders, which was so big for Jose in that game. Of course, he does have a few of them, uh, but you know, being able to find them at the right time is really, really important. We're going to be opening up with a Lugia V. Quick ball, getting rid of the Drapion. Completely useless in this matchup, so an easy one to be throwing away. And then start picking up the pieces of this deck. But I think the tempo is going to be increased a little bit. Uh, you know, if we want to go through a, a full set of three games here for Jose, he does need to play and make sure he, you know, wins this game nice and early. Yep. It's going to really come down to how fast he can pop off and how long really it takes Eric to start attacking and taking knockouts is a big deal because I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to at this point. Of can Eric take a turn two knockout? Can Eric get four Zeruin to play turn one? Does Eric have the ability to utilize Call for Family? These are all questions, and it feels like Eric is always the one in control when it comes to uh, like what the options are with making plays with this deck because you are the one with the options playing Zoroark. You have so many different Pokemon to attack with, so many different options, and this is a perfect way to start things out. Capture Energy, Call for Family is such a good attack on turn one. We've had Call for Family for so many years mm -hmm. in so many decks. The format has sped up a lot as of recently, so we haven't seen Call for Family be very meta relevant, but in a deck like this where you're already playing the Pokemon itself, you, you, you play it because you, you want well. to Chino. And this one was released very recently in Brilliant Stars as well. Before, there was the option between playing the 60 HP Minchino and the 70 HP one. But now, you can play one that's very useful to your benefit and your setup. What's your favorite Call for Family Pokemon, Ethan? I didn't play back then, but the Strike and Run Dunsparce was a big part of, of the format that it was legal in. Okay. It down three basic Pokemon, then it switched itself to the bench, yeah. and a lot of setup decks it utilized. I'm an Emolga man myself. Emolga. I, I like a little Emolga. Anyway, okay. back to the turn at uh, hand. Eric Smith obviously getting pieces that he needs. There's a Rua hitting the bench. And one thing to note before we really focus on what Eric's getting up to, uh, no Archeops in the discard. Yeah. We always talk about it with this Lugia no. deck. You've got to make sure that you're hitting that turn two summoning star. And uh, it's going to be a stretch, we'll put it that way. With three cards in hand, you've got to be able to search out a couple Archeops. You've got to be able to get a Lugia V-Star in play as well. And not only have you got to search out the Archeops, you've got to get them in the discard. That takes a lot of cards sometimes. So Eric has an interesting decision here on what to grab with Call for Family. You have Manaphy, you have Zerua, you have another Chinchino. You have to imagine what your opponent's going to have. And this is a smart choice. A lot of players would be scared to just leave a single Zerua in play. But with how little Jose did last turn, mm -hmm. didn't get any Archeops in the discard pile, doesn't have an extremely high amount of cards in hand, it's very unlikely that Jose can get something like the double Archeops into play and find a boss's orders to take a knockout onto the Zerua. And what that means is finding the extra Minchino is going to allow you to get set up quicker, yep. which in turn means turns of just putting two or three Zerua down into play. Oh, I think the Mani here is the, the only real option for Jose. You've got to be seeing some new cards. Holding on to that boss just wasn't going to be the one. Yes, you could put the Zerua in the active, but you're nowhere near a summoning star. You're nowhere near a primal turbo, and you're just not going to be able to get there. Much better for him off this one. There's Ultra Balls and a Archeops. Uh, so, you know, could try and... and really accelerate uh, and go for it. Just has to be smart about it. There's Archeops uh, for the first one. And of course, one of those double turbo energies. Oh, uh, lingering on that one, not so sure. All right, Flying Pikachu V, not today, mate. You're not needed. So it's possible with this hand. It is, can, no, it can, is. Can go, but the, the cost of it would be to play with no cards in hand. We saw this round, uh, round four with Jose. Had the potential to make that play, but decided mm -hmm. to not, to try to keep the Serena on top instead. So these, mm -hmm. are, these are decisions you have to make. Do you... Do you just only summoning star for one? Do you wait a turn? What do you do here? We saw that Archeops is a good Ooh. Pokemon to trade into these Pokemon, but at the same time, how confident do you feel? But no, <laughs> just gonna go all in for it. This is a full send. But th it's actually okay here at the end of the day because this Ultra Ball can actually grab another Pokemon out of the deck, so you can just grab Luminion with this. But Luminion's a Pokemon that you really just wanna be utilizing later on in the game. Instead though, is gonna leave himself with zero cards at hand and say, you know what? I really just value getting the Raikou into play right now, not having to worry about it later, potentially being a good attacker in the future, and just saying, let's just start attacking with Lugia. Let's just start lighting it up here with the energies in play with Primal Turbo. And, of course, the Archeops can serve as an attacker, too. I mean, it does well. Yeah, it, it, it hits, the numbers, too, yeah. hits the numbers that it needs to hit. So there's the double turbo energy heading down on to the Lugia and followed up by a capture energy. So that's the first Primal Turbo being resolved. Um, you know, and here's the thing. If you take one of those Minchinos out, you were saying if he just gets left with two, that's a double make-do available every turn. So cutting that one off isn't so painful, I don't think. Of course, you do have to be cautious of the Lugia V-Star uh, being able to then cause Prob uh, you know, get knocked out uh, very readily. But 
You also know that the right shoe, one of the things that caused so many problems, isn't in there right now. So that would be kind of an extra stretch for Eric to make to be able to get that in there. As this Raikou does get the double Aurora energy, exactly what it needs for an amazing shot. Uh, and of course, can try and find maybe a play uh, to deal with that mana fee. As Mancino's knocked out, and Jose takes the first prize. So yeah, even though there's nothing left in the hand, he does get uh, one option off his prizes. Uh, looking at the prize map, uh, I believe I can take a, a little guess at what it was. And I think, looking from earlier, it's going to be a quick ball. So uh, not the not the dream, uh, but at least no. you could maybe, you know, you get one more card. Maybe you could grab a Lumini. Uh, I mean, the quick, the quick no. ball will, will allow Luminion to be searched yeah. out with the top deck. So not bad at all. But the question here is, uh, what can you really do? Every time I see Worker, I just have to, like, relook at the card again because we're, we're not used to seeing this card at all. There's a lot of draw three effects we've had in the Pokemon trading card game, but... Eric really values being able to discard stadium cards with this deck. There's a lot that can make the deck mm -hmm. go wrong. Stuff like Collapse Stadium is annoying. Stuff like uh, Sim uh, Temple of Sinnoh, that is another yep. card that's really annoying. So having access to just getting rid of the stadiums while also drawing cards, you're fine to build up these big hands because that's what the Chinchino engine does with your deck. You're getting plus one every time you use the ability, and you're getting rid of these Pokemon you already want in your discard pile. Yep. So how do we think Eric wants to go about this? Obviously, he needs to be able to get a Zoroark in play, and then he needs something for the Zoroark to transform into. That's the big question right now, is how is he going to be able to make that play? Uh, we'll see exactly how he goes about it. Uh, let's see what he decides to do on this one. Uh, looks like mulling this one over, yeah. not an easy decision with the capture energy going onto the benched Zerua. So the problem is the hand does not have anything else going for it. Yep. There is just some supporters and some searching options and no way to find a Zoroark. So with how it stands, that's going to be it. It's going to be a pass over of the turn. This would have been a big opportunity to take a knockout with the Appleton. Again, Jose is just putting plenty of these energies into play, not really caring about taking... Could have just taken this knockout with the three energies on the active and forced maybe the Raichu to come out if the Raichu wasn't already in the discard pile, but maybe just assumes, hey, there's enough threats in the discard pile already. Maybe the Raichu is already in there that you just take the knockout and it's a big opportunity for Jose. Can start this game up potentially two prizes ahead. Mm -hmm. And you need that tempo when you're not playing cards like Dunsparce where essentially everything is getting knocked out in one hit. Except yep. for Charizard, as we saw, that was able to avoid it. But assuming a Zoroark can come into play any turn, assuming there's stuff like Serena in the discard pile, there's always that option. Yep, well, he's got Luminion uh, pulling that right on up to the front, being able to, of course, get a supporter off that. He is going to be taking the boss's orders, it looks like. So targeting down these Pokemon on the bench has been a really, really big thing for uh, Jose. And while it didn't quite work out for him in the previous game with the fact he's ahead on the prize trade i think he's feeling pretty good about it primal turbos to follow up he's left the boss's orders face up that's fine oh there it is <laughs> flips it down um, so yeah so this boss's orders has a few potential options to to target up in there the mana is the big one of course yeah however you could also make the argument to just grab the chinchino your opponent didn't really do much last turn but the fact is removing mana is going to open up these multi-prize turns and that's what jose is looking after try to utilize this lugia take some knockouts, commit the energy to Lukia. Jose understands at this point that Eric is not playing any way to target down these one prize Pokemon. No spread damage, no fun shenanigans like that. And can just safely power these Pokemon up on the bench just in case something happens to these Archeops. Wants to just have that available. This boss's orders will be able to target down what is most likely the Manaphy. Again, we can't, we can't read these players' minds, but yep, there it is. Yep. Manaphy bring, being brought up. And Eric is essentially on a one-turn clock at this point. Yeah, is there a way to find the Ordinary Rod and search the Pokemon back? If not, Jose can go down to two prizes, potentially without Eric taking any. I honestly think Eric has to fire oh, back Oh, he has right it in now. hand. He has the Ordinary Rod in hand and the Quick Ball. Uh, he's got to get all of the pieces, though. I mean, his discard for options for Phantom Transformation aren't looking so hot, uh, you know, looking in there right now. So I think that's something he's going to have to, to really consider. Um, you know, he doesn't have the Raichu in there right now that would be a really good pokemon to swing with but he doesn't have it available and like you say it's really one turn clock for me there's the bird keeper to switch into the uh, zerua with the energy draw some cards maybe see one of those pokemon that needs to go into the discard uh, wow that's uh, a big th three cards yeah, there's an evolution incense that's absolutely a bit huge and the zoroark itself mm -hmm. so being able to play that one just feels really really good of course when you swing that you know quickly back though my big concern is this Raikou is just going to come up to the front and start going crazy with the knockouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. But does have the Ordinary Rod and a way to search it out, as well as the Evolution Incense. Has not utilized the trade ability yet either this turn. 
or rather make do. Sorry, I'm used to. I'm I wasn't going to. Gonna, I wasn't going to correct okay. you. We all know what you meant by trading. We, uh, we're all I'm good. glad we're. I'm glad we're on the same page here. I still miss it, but make do is the same. So make do will be able to discard what is most likely going to be the Raichu off of this evolution incense that will be able to take knockout. Appleton also does the same thing. The thing with Appleton is sometimes it can do more damage than Raichu depending on the Pokemon that comes into play. Mm -hmm. So it's just a good card to have. I think Raichu is a more consistent stream of damage, so it's a little bit better, but Thick Mucus is still a really strong attack. Yeah, it's going to be able to easily get the knockout on to the uh, Lugia V-Star that sat in the active. Um, but, I mean, it's not going to withstand anything from this Raichu. It's just going to get knocked out in response. I think that's going to be uh, kind of a, a really easy way uh, for these turns to go. Of course, Eric needs to make sure that it's in the discard, and Make Do is going to help him do that. Another Chinchino means if he gets another option, uh, then he's going to be in great shape. So uh, Ordinary Rod looking in that discard, saying, you know what, I want to get some of these pieces back, uh, would we'll be able to, to go for it. It looks like they're having a discussion about the execution of the Ordinary Rod, uh, just making sure everything is above board. So Ordinary Rod being uh, lingered yeah, over for a second there. It's half. just a thing where you're on stream and sometimes it's just a little bit stressful and sometimes you're, you're, you're so focused that Eric is going to play the Ordinary Rod at some point, but I think his reasoning for not playing it now, or rather considering not playing it, is maybe there's another Pokemon to bring back instead, right? Yep. The Manaphy's still going to come back, but right now it's okay. We're just going to see the Manaphy come back. Nothing else is going to change. The Manaphy has to come back, otherwise yep. this Raikou's going to run absolute Raya over this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not a big difference. Manaphy's still coming back, but you could get a little bit more value on it later on, and I think that's really what Eric is considering of, of waiting to draw into potentially some more of these cards. But uh, the way it works in Pokemon, for the most part, is if you let go of a card and if you play a card, then it sort of is considered as being played, and that's sort of the discussion here. Is, uh, Eric sort of played it down in this card pile, but as long as both players are on the same page and it agreed, it's up to the players to decide how they're going to play through this. But, uh, I mean, we haven't touched on all these attackers so far in the deck. There's a lot of different ones to go over, but mm -hmm. we're just going to stick to the ones that are relevant in this matchup because a Zorark box is a deck that, I mean, I enjoy playing it. I play it on ladders sometimes. I play it when I've got some spare time. It's got a lot of versatility, but it is a deck that, like, if you, like, had a, had a little quiz you put online, it's like, okay, this Pokemon is attacking you. What Pokemon do you use into this? It's like, yep. oh, I use Raichu for this one. Or, okay, I'm going to use uh, Flapple for this to do 50 for every ability. It has that versatility. And we talked about that before with Crackler's deck. It's the same thing here. It's just a little bit different. And, I mean, the thing I keep hearing online is how does this deck beat Lost Box? That's a, a whole different topic. That's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> you know what? If you don't hit Lost Box, this Lugia matchup has been pretty convincing so far for Eric. And... I mean, Everything else that wants to trade into it, like one prize decks, like Mew VMAX as well. It's got the Mighty Enna for that as well to deal some solid damage. Yeah, it's I also wanted, pretty good. I kind of wanted to bring that up with the uh, Hustle Bark, uh, being able to attack for free. You don't have to really power it up. That's a good ability. And of course, name. That, that's that a, is, great that is a great ability. ability the Trainer Art's really good for it too. Yeah, I, awesome. I also really enjoy that card. He is, he is snacking for sure on the Trainer Art. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's uh, very excited by the offerings on the table. Uh, in, uh, anyway, it's not relevant here. There's no Mew. <laughs> There's that's no why it's, Mew. It, it's in the discard He's and it's staying <laughs> there. Anyway, Appleton is in the active. Appleton is, of course, going to be able to take the knockout with the thick mucus. Very comfortably so. And the presence of that Manaphy means the next couple turns get a little bit dicey, I think, for Jose. You know, he was going to be able to run away with it with the Raikou. Uh, but, you know, has to maybe target it down again, uh, being able to, to cause some problems. Evolution Sense grabs an Archeops. Aurora Energy goes down onto the Luminion. Uh, and then there's going to be a Primal Turbo to follow things up. Uh, the Luminion, you know, could uh, just Aqua return here and get a knockout of its own, get out of the way, and, of course, be able to be used later if he needs to find another supporter. Yeah, I think that effect, too, of grabbing Boss or Bird Keeper later is, is a big plus, and it's the reason that Luminion already is great in this deck to find supporters to keep your deck consistent, but more so because you just can put it back in. And there's a lot of Pokemon right now that are super powerful tech attackers like the Charizard, like Yveltal sometimes in the matches. And Luminion just does what you want it to do. It's your, super, it's your supporter, it's your searcher, but it also can take knockouts and put itself back in the deck when need be. Well, another prize for Jose as the Appleton is felled very quickly and immediately removed from play with the Aqua Return. And the Aqua Return puts it right back for a for later, a little treat, a little snack you can save yourself uh, to pull up one of those key supporters. Uh, there is going to be more cards hitting the discard, thanks to the make do. This is a massive, massive hand for Eric. You know, and mm -hmm. the big thing is that Serena you know, isn't going to be a draw option right now with way too many cards in hand to get any value out of it. And the problem is this hand has everything. It has energy, it has ways to draw cards. 
all that stuff, but it has no access to any Zoroark right now. And that <laughs> is the big miss for Eric. Has to decide, do you want to commit to another Chinchino? Maybe try to thin the hand out with Serena. Serena is great, but it only allows you to discard a maximum of three cards from your hand. And because there's that cap, it sometimes can just feel like a, a mediocre draw supporter. you got to thin all your hand out, and then you do all that work for what? To draw two cards? There's just better options sometimes. But this deck is never really drawing more than three cards anyways off the supporter, whether it's with Bird Keeper, Worker, or Serena, as we are just going to see. It looks like another make do. Still, no Zoroark. No Zoroark, and no way to get to it either. That's really, really big. It looks like he's going to be setting up potentially, just trying to thin the deck a little bit. Another card out is going to help for those following make dos. But honestly, you know, this deck is certainly struggling. If you're not able to stream the Zoroarks, keep them turning into exactly what you want every single time, it's absolutely massive. So yeah, he's just grabbing that with the level ball. Uh, maybe trying to set up, maybe going to have to get another uh, Minchino down, obviously, to use that. Uh, for full value, but overall it's uh, looking pretty good here for Jose. He's in the driving seat, and I don't know if Eric's going to be able to keep up. It looks like he may just be about to Here lose pace in the prize it's trade. A worker. This is going to be a big three cards. Do we see Zorak? There's still plenty of outs in the deck. And there uh, it is, Evolution Incense. That yep. middle card there will be That's able to find Zorak and already has the energy in hand, so it can continue to take pace in this matchup. We are coming up on just over six minutes left in the round. And this is like this is a grindy end game. It's just it's taking knockouts back and forth, recovering pieces, and I mean Jose at this point is playing for a match point. There, there is yep. no real way to win this game. Eric has so many ways to just flood the board with one prize Pokemon, get Manaphy down, and from there, uh, it's just it's too little, too late. There, there's there's no way Jose can win that fast and in that little turns. I think what he's done really well here is I, I love the choice after the Aqua Return of putting up that Galarian Mister Mime, um, just putting that up. You know you've got all your resources and assets set on the Raikou, the Archeops, the Archeops. You've got them set up, right? So why lose those? You're not gonna give those away for free. That's that's silly. So just giving up this, you know, Mr. Mime, not really a key piece right now for him. And then you can keep these prize pieces. I mean, you need three knockouts. Uh, you know, you, you're facing a single prize deck. You need three knockouts. Okay, you now have three attackers that are gonna get knockouts yeah. every single time. And I don't think Eric has anything he can throw up to block that as such. You know, the the here thing here is the Serena, you know, he needed cards if he was going to play that. He had to play the worker to be able to to get those cards. Yes, he could try and mess around with, with potentially, you know, a switch if something like a Lugia was down, but it, it just doesn't have an option. That Serena feels pretty useless right now. Archeops put up in the active, uh, you know, would need a little bit more with a Primal Turbo uh, to be able to attack. Uh, but it's not really a stretch to go in and, and find a special energy in this deck when you literally have an ability that says, go and get one. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, Jose understands, just like we do, where trading with this deck, it, it's not going to work. As long as Zoroark's get streamed, you're not going to be able to win this prize trade. Even if you go down one more prize than your opponent, because of the way that Slowbro works. Ooh, However, I like this, this is your strategy, and this is what Jose is going for. Yeah, Target I mean Manaphy down over and over again, and try to use Raikou to, switch, to skip that turn of Twilight Inspiration. If you just can win the game on two prizes, you yep. play around your opponent having that option altogether. I like that play as well. Being able to target that down, force Eric into using these ordinary rods, waste not wasting, but forcing a mana fee on the each other of one them. In hand too. I know. That's big. Yeah, but it's now, you know, it's not a Zoroark going back in, or it's not a Zoroark piece going back in. It's like half, right? Because you yeah. can still put back another piece at least. Yeah, you get you get a Zoroark, that's eight. It's not bad. But you know, it's not Zoro a Zoroark, which I think is the optimal for something like this course, the Appleton is going to be able to just take a knockout here, which kind of helps Eric a little bit, right? He didn't have to spend Zoroark pieces on getting that Appleton set up, because Jose is so laser focused on this Mana Fee, which he is just going to be able to get back. Quick Ball, discarding Quick Ball. Here we go. Where is it? Oh, it's uh, on the top, <laughs> and it goes right back onto the bench. Yep, saying, hey, I understand Raikou is the most powerful card in this matchup, and all that matters is this turn. If there's any turn that Manaphy could be down, this is like the most important turn yep. where you can skip the one prize turn to just win the game. And yep. th this is what it matters. So the, the big thing here yeah. is, you know, honestly, Eric has a quite a, a clean line. If, you know, he, he can get the, the position for the slow bro, if he forces him to play into the slow bro, he could swing it back. He's just got to play into it. And I think that's, you know, forcing it with the Manaphy every time is exactly what he needs to do. So Eric, Definitely not out of this game yet, even though Jose has set up his board very, very nicely. Just seeing the deck get thinned out a little bit, we've seen the Evolution Incense get played. 
utilizing these trade abilities, make do abilities, take these Pokemon out of the deck that aren't needed. Uh, we're seeing some uh, some ones we haven't seen at all. There's the Hisuian Zoroark from Lost Origins. I got a pop quiz. Do you know what that card does, Adam? I'm not 100% on the Hisuian Zoroark that's not the, the V and the it's V not star. The v. It knocks out the opponent's active Pokemon if they are still in the active at the end of the turn. And it does it for free, though. It doesn't attack for any energy cards, but if your opponent doesn't play a way to switch back and forth a lot, the, it just takes the knockouts. The Doom Curse, being able to, to deal with that one. I remember reading it, and I, I think I bulked that card really quickly. Um, I, I'll be honest. Mistake right there. No, no respect for it for me. Um, I thought it seems like a fun idea, but then when I, this was when everyone was just playing, uh, you know, 14 switching cards, yeah. and you just uh -huh. thought that is, that is not worth it. No, it's difficult, but in those niche scenarios, their decks right now aren't playing that many Switch. Oh. It can be really solid. Okay, so Eric's path to victory here, kind of clear. I mean, this Raikou can't take both the knockouts. He's got Zerua's on the bench. I know the Slowbro's in the discard, mm -hmm. so is he just going to be able to swing this game as soon as we go to time? There's the quick ball. I really think, I mean, Eric's in a great position uh, to, to be able to swing this one as long as he can at next turn. Uh, and assuming Jose gives him the opportunity to use that slow bro, yeah. use that really annoying Twilight Inspiration. And this is the thing, too, is because Jose has these special energies in play, there's no way to prevent this Appleton from taking a knockout. There, there's, like, a weird thing you can do where because there's only two Zeru in play, you could, like, wait for your opponent to get greedy and, like, evolve into a Pokemon and then utilize boss's orders to make sure they can't use slow bro on that turn. Yep. But because... No matter what you do here, because there's three energy in play, even if you retreat off the Raikou, the Appleton's going to be taking a knockout, or it can yeah. take a knockout this turn. Okay. And, uh, it looks like the only out for Jose here is to just Marnie and pray. Marnie, give Eric a small hand size and hope that there's no Zoroark and no double turbo or twin energy. There were two prize, so now one of those will be on the bottom of the deck, but Eric plays so many different ways to search the deck and shuffle the deck up that yep. if any of those can just rearrange the deck a little bit, those are the pieces that are needed. It's, it's very clear here, and uh, oh boy, I would be happy if we could see a Twilight Inspiration. I don't know if we've actually seen it on stream yet, but that uh, is the way to win the game. That is like that is like a walk-off home run, right? Yeah. To, to win with Twilight Inspiration. That is just, I'm hoping to see it. It's going to be on Eric to see if he can find those pieces to close this game out. It's something I've heard rumored, some myth that people talk Fairy about. Tale, right? People talk yeah. about it, but I've never seen it with my own eyes. So does it exist? I don't know, Ethan. It, it could not. Ooh, this this Collapse Stadium is a tough choice. I actually, it's actually okay. Your opponent's yeah. already played their supporter card for a turn, so it's it, like, what are they going to do to change this, right? So You just need one, right? You just need the one. Um, oh, this uh, is actually yeah, he's, really smart. He's avoiding it. He's so desperate to avoid it. Oh, it actually, it doesn't change anything. He's just going to Lumini yeah. on it. I mean, yeah, it's he's just going to Lumini return. on it back in. Yeah, I thought there was like some play he could oh, could have no, done yeah. where... Um, if the energies weren't left on, something something would have changed, but uh, it looks like this is going to be it. Awkward turn, taking a knockout. Do we see it in hand? Not it's quite yet. I don't think there's any ability to do something. I think the one of Marnie is in hand, so that's a good way to start the turn out. Ooh, but, oh, but did find the twin energy. So at this point, because you already have twin energy in hand, all it comes down to is can Eric find a Zoroark? Checking through the discard pile. Is the slow bro there? Checking the total amount of energy. It went energy in really in early, deck. I believe. Yeah, I'm just just making sure it's still there. Yep, yeah, there it is. There at it the is. bottom discard pile. So only down a few energy cards. I think Eric is debating: Do I want to just start drawing cards right now and commit that? Hey, I've got the energy already in hand. I can find the Zoroark. A lot of it comes down to what is at the bottom of the deck. I what was put there with the Marty over on Jose's he's, side. He's also checking resources, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to say, okay, what search cards do I have available? And time um, is just called as well. Yep. So Eric confirming his turn zero. There's the choice belt going down. Uh, not going to be relevant, but at least it's out of the hand. It's out of the way. Uh, looks like we're going just for the Marnie right now. Here we go. It's on Eric. Most Jose can do is try to squeak a match point out of this game. It's on Eric to figure out if he can find the pieces to win this game. Has access to two trade abilities, five cards off this Marnie. And here we go. We're going to see what happens. Do we see it? There's the Zoroark. This does have that and a Quick Ball as well. There was, a, there was a Twin Energy put to the bottom of the deck, so it is better, in my opinion, to play the Quick Ball to shuffle the deck back up. Yep. That way, the Double Turbo, or rather, the Twin Energy can be put somewhere in the deck. And here Definitely. we go. It's going to be pretty much a huge two trades for Eric. He's going to see four cards this turn, and it's it's all comes down to do we see the double turbo energy? Also, oh wait, oh no, I forgot. So 
Uh, actually, the way this can work at worst anyways is uh, as long as, well, Eric needs to find, um, Eric has the Zoroark, right? Yep. So because we're still in turns of time, even if Eric isn't able to find the twin energy, it's still an okay spot because what can happen here is the Zoroark can utilize Thick Mucus on the Appleton to knock out the Archeops, and then what is going to attack the next turn over on Jose's side? What is yeah. there that can... Uh, there's no way for this Raikou to attack the following turn. It only has a single energy. So yeah. at worst, Eric is not losing this game because he can remove the attacker. But I want to see him win now. Where I is want it? to see him win faster. There it is! He yeah, has it. it! We're going to see it here! The Zoroark Phantom Transformation turning into the Slowbro, and there it is! It's has real! The energy. It's real, it exists, and there it is! Twilight Inspiration can only use it when your opponent has one prize. Taking the final two, Eric Smith will advance to day two at six, one and one. <laughs> the rumors, they weren't, they weren't made up. Twilight Inspiration sealing a game here and putting Eric into day two as well. Fantastic play from both trainers. I think Eric, you know, going the distance, showing how frustrating these one prize decks can be, but showing the depth and breadth of this fantastic Zoroark box. Honestly, I really, really enjoyed that game. I think this is uh, one of those, we talked about it with Adam earlier. We said, you know, do you put in the reps against it? Well, no, I mean, you, you get to see no. the cards in the discard. You get to just know exactly what's going on at all times. But fantastic gameplay from both trainers. I think Jose did a fantastic job fighting back. But ultimately, in both games, the loss of the Lugia skewed the prize trade. Giving up that Lugia V-Star to that Raichu. The Raichu wasn't prized. That was huge for Eric. Being able to grab that, yes, you have to summoning star. But then you're looking at taking 280 damage. And uh, yeah, that is a knockout on a Lugia V-Star. That's two prizes. And against a one prize deck, that kind of off-balance trade really hurts. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Not having the Dunsparce there was definitely a big, big time disadvantage there for Jose in that game. You have Dunsparce, you can avoid the Raichu taking mm -hmm. those prizes early on. The Raichu also can't take prizes on things like the Archeops as well. And I think Jose played really well there. Jose had uh, not really many options. There were a lot of cards that weren't valuable there. Things like the Flying Pikachu couldn't be used. The Galarian Mr. Ryan had no effect in the matchup, right? So things like that, you're kind of already playing disadvantage because you've got cards that don't help you at all. They're yep. there for different circumstances. While with uh, the deck over on Eric's side with Zorark Box, well, they're Pokemon you don't use, sure, but you can just go ahead and discard them like you would yeah. everything else. We just don't really care. You're just going to trash them with Serena anyways. So. Just make do them, Serena exactly. them, whatever yeah, you yeah. need. It, it really does work really, really nicely for him. So uh, fantastic execution of a deck that I know Eric's been working on a, a whole lot. A lot of people have been talking about him being the, the standout player of it here in the room today. And going into day two with it, showing all of the options. I mean, there was literally, I think, one, two, three three attackers that we did? Four, four. Mm -hmm. Four attackers we didn't see. Obviously, we saw them go into the discard across the games, but just showing all of the options that you have to start hitting things with. Yeah, and this is an advantage of a toolbox deck. I mean, we've seen this with Regigigas as of recently, where when you have a lot of different attackers that either are specialized to take care of certain Pokemon or have weakness coverage against yep. a lot of different Pokemon, Weakness is a big part of the Pokemon game. Being able to deal double damage is a very powerful advantage. Cannot stress that enough, and it 